Hey, what's up guys, Metal Five Seven One here, and this is the Odyssey LCD-1. I've been playing with this headphone for about a week now, and it was sent to me directly from Odyssey, just in case you're wondering where this guy came from. This is a $399, 13 .5 ohm, 99 decibel per milliwatt, 90 millimeter planar magnetic open back headphone. It's quite a portable headphone for an Odyssey too, as it only weighs 250 grams, which is really incredible. So, the, what does it sound like? The bass first. This has got a lot of that open back Odyssey planar bass you're looking for at a much cheaper price than uh, the, I'm just going to call them the big LCDs in this review, like my LCD 2 phaser up there, which is very, quite a bit larger and quite a bit heavier than this headphone. Um, and I find that because I wear glasses, although they are fairly thin rimmed as they go back further here, um, it, they do break the seal a little bit, and so some of the base extension on my measurements, which is really not the most accurate measurement, you shouldn't trust it. Um, and Odyssey's measurements shows a, show a little bit of a base, um, a negative shelf kind of in the base, but that's because um, it takes a little bit of playing around with these to seal them perfectly. And uh, because I wear glasses, a little bit of that seal was compromised. And on the mini DSP ears that I have, uh, that was the best measurement I could get for sealing, but if any one of you guys have ever used one of those, you'll know that sealing a headphone that requires a sealed front volume on it is quite difficult. And so the bass is very capable. Um, I think the impact, however, is a little bit compromised versus the higher end stuff, but nothing major. Um, but for $399, I mean, this thing is blowing away the Sennheiser 650 and the 660S in the base. It's like not even a question here. <laughs> the detail and the extension are all there. Uh, seal may definitely affect your perception of the base on this guy, but even for me, I was able to hear bass very, very low, uh, even with my glasses on. But your experience may be even more positive than I'm describing, depending on... Uh, how well it seals on your head. There's quite a decent amount of clamp force without being excessive, so if it seals properly, um, I don't think you're gonna have much of a problem with the base here. And again, compared to a dynamic, <laughs> it's not even playing in the same ballpark, it's just so much better. Um, the mid-range is very interesting on this headphone too. And I say that with the most positive spin here because a lot of the time I find Odyssey's mid-range tends to have quite a bit of excessive energy around 800 hertz or to around 1K. Um, not so here, and also I tend to find that they have quite a bit of a roll-off as you go into 3 and 4 and 5K. Again, not a problem here. In fact, believe it or not, the mids here at around 3.5K, the upper mids right around your residence, they're about 2 decibels forward for my preference, <laughs> instead of recessed by something like 3 or more decibels, depending on which LCD we're talking about, 2, 3, 4, whatever. Um, so this is a much better headphone right out of the box in terms of the upper mid-range tuning. It's not as uh, subdued as uh, the LCD-2 in particular. LCD-2 is quite quite a quiet upper mid-range to my ears and definitely needs some EQ. This guy, you may not need any EQ in the upper mids. Although I am, of course, <laughs> an obsessive EQ-aholic here, so I definitely corrected the upper mids just a bit to my preference. Um, most people might find them completely fine, actually, because my preferences are quite warm, if you don't know. My G650 is my reference headphone, and I find that it's about 3 decibels too forward, 2 to 3 decibels too forward, to 3.5K as well. Anywho, uh, I also think there's a little bit of a lack of ear resonance rise as we come up around 2 kilohertz. Uh, comparing by ear between the 650 and this headphone, I added another two decibels. I added two decibels instead of subtracting two decibels to 2K. Um, that way, it kind of gets rid of that fresh or like hi-fi man-ish sounding upper mid-range. But it's not a really severe dip, at least to me. So with that slight uh, adjustment there in the upper mids, the mids are just <laughs> they're just awesome here, and they start a lot more neutral, in my opinion, than the LCD2. So it's pretty good if you're looking to try to mix something on this. Um, and like I said, the, at 1K, some Odysseys have a bit of a small hump there. You can see that on the LCD2 measurements that I've, I think I've posted before, and uh, this doesn't have that problem at all either, amazingly. So... Despite any all of that stuff, the, <laughs> the colorations that are really small in the mids here compared to a lot of Odysseys, um, other than that, the detail and the decay is quick. The detail is good. I think that's pretty much everything you're looking for, considering this is only a $400 headphone here. 
Uh, and so moving into the treble, okay, this is really surprisingly, insanely good treble. Um, I wrote in my notes here, this has to be the most detailed and the most masterly tuned treble in any high efficiency headphone anywhere near this price. I mean, if you think about it, this headphone, because it's only 13 and a half ohms, it'll run off of absolutely everything. Super loud, runs much louder than the 660S, and yet it manages to out-resolve my 650 and 660S. That is just, like, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you can point at things like LCDX and Empyrean, which are obviously even more detailed than this headphone, but they cost so much more than $399, so this is so surprising. Um, and I am really shocked at the treble quality in this headphone. It is unbelievable for $399. Um, there is a little bit of a dip, I think, at 8 k around the sibilance region that I correct with EQ, but I'm getting pretty picky there again. Otherwise, there's really nothing that stands out to me. What's really great about this is the air on this headphone above 10K is just so good. Like, it glistens, it's very clear, but it's also not grainy or hazy in any way, and it's just very wonderful to listen to. Lots of detail, lots of treble extension, and it's not aggressive or harsh or forward. And yeah, like I said, this clearly out-resolves my HD 650. It's really surprising. Um, and I also want to note that my mini DSP ears does not do this thing justice at all in the frequency response and the treble. In fact, it really messes it up, I would say. Uh, thankfully, Odyssey sent me their measurement, which is raw, by the way, so you can't directly compare it to the shape of the graph that my ears produces, which is using the HPN compensation. But if you look at that, you can see that the raw shape of the frequency response on their gross keymar is much more normal looking in and and in the treble it's much more normal looking as well <laughs> and that's how this headphone measures and the reason why it looks weird on the ears is because if you noticed my porta pro measurements from a previous review also have just a huge like shelf down treble and that happens because the ears is not very good in particular it's not very good at measuring headphones that have drivers closer to the ear simulator and this is one of those. This is not as big or wide or far away, uh, you know, of a diaphragm from the ear compared to something like an LCD2, which is much further away. So that's that's why it looks weird. And actually, I took all of these impressions before I even measured the headphone, believe it or not. <laughs> I just did a combination of playing with EQ, sweeping a sign, all that stuff, and comparing with the 650. And that's how I came up with these. Um, to the sound stage, all right, this is the only area where this is a bit compromised, honestly. <laughs> it's not the biggest sound stage in the world. In fact, it's not really that much bigger than an HD 650, if, if bigger at all, uh, in terms of the width of the sound stage. But what's interesting is the imaging is actually better on this headphone than the Sennheisers, which is thankfully the case because I'm listening to Yoshi Horikawa's letters again, which is what I tend to use a lot for a soundstage. This versus the 650, it was just, there was no comparison. The three blob soundstage on the Sennheisers are well known by now. If you've been following this channel for a while, you kind of get instruments off to the sides, and then you get instruments kind of in the center. But in between, it's just like blurred and doesn't even exist really. In this headphone, you can clearly hear the pencil writing all over the soundstage. It's not the widest presentation. It's fairly intimate, but the imaging of where the pencil is writing in that song is very specific and much more realistic. So if you're mixing, that's really important to know. This is a much better representation of where the instruments are in this case apparently it is a pencil and paper in that song <laughs> um so what what else so this is mainly a sound review and if you guys have been following me for a while again you'll know that i've shortened my format and um i don't talk as much about comfort and build quality but that's because thankfully on this headphone <laughs> there's really nothing to note here uh, the comfort's very good the pads are made from genuine leather unlike the mobius um, the thing plays super loud from any source. You don't need a headphone amp at all, really. Um, and they even include a case in the box as well. And it just completes the whole package. You've got the portable reference headphone here that needs minimal EQ. It doesn't even really require it, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah. In conclusion here, if you want to compare this to the Monoprice M1060, first of all, don't. I already preferred the clear detail advantage that the 650 has over the mono price way back when I did that review. Um, 
and the not broken four and a half kilohertz region <laughs> on the Sennheiser. So the LCD one has distinct advantages over the 650 on top of that. So that doesn't really compare. Um, I will say though, I haven't heard the newest model price planners that have just come out not that long before this review is being shot. I think the 1570 is one of them. Uh, I haven't heard the Verum 1 yet at home. I haven't heard the HE560 V1 yet, but that's a pretty bright headphone, at least by reputation. So if you're looking for the Odyssey house sound and something that's similar to Harman without the bass shelf, basically, um, in an open back that's portable and very affordable too, and doesn't weigh as much as the big LCDs, then this is quite a good choice. I have to admit, this was, at first, when I put this on, I was like, oh my. Sennheiser, is Sennheiser doomed now? Is the is the mid-fi sound of the 650 dead? Should everybody just go buy this right now? That was a difficult question to answer, and I have to admit that I still like the timbre and the way the dynamic drivers on the Sennheisers present sound, especially the mid-range and treble tuning compared to this. Um, but this is so much more efficient than a 660S, and the detail on the treble, like I said, is better, which is really crazy for being this price. So <laughs> I cannot say anything except for highly recommended headphone. Definitely a good buy. And uh, considering all the accessories included and the ease of being driven, I can't see any reason not to buy this guy and check it out. So there you go. That's the Odyssey LCD One. Hope that helps you make a decision on whether you'd like to purchase one. I certainly enjoyed it and uh, am quite impressed by it. Thanks, guys. See you in the next review.